have an idea in your mind of something you want and you deserve to get it. So how do you get there? Well, welcome to the Idea Space, a podcast devoted to helping you overcome frustration and make what you want a reality. I'm your host, Jen Liddy, high school teacher turned entrepreneur. Now I'm a business development coach. It's my mission to help women bring their ideas to life and get what they want without feeling guilty, selfish, overwhelmed, or lost. Every week, I share topics, tools, and strategies to help you move toward that thing you want. Create time and energy to do the things you love, get clarity on what you really want and how to get there, and most importantly, stop feeling alone with your challenges. Whether you've wanted to create a better business, job, relationship, hobby, or self, I know there's something more that you want, and it's time you were able to get it with confidence and clarity. Ready to have it? Let's go. Welcome to this week's Idea Space podcast. I'm your host, Jen Liddy. This week, I'm asking a fairly simple question What do you want? Now, if you are like my clients, my husband, my friends, my kid, the answer to that question is really hard for such a simple question. What do you want? The answer is very complex. So, obviously, as a coach, I often ask my clients, What do you want? And a deafening silence most often follows. And the pattern of this fascinated me. And I began to think like, why don't we know what we want? Believe me, I'm not sitting in judgment of you if you don't know what you want, because I struggled with this my whole life. If you asked me what I wanted in my teens or my 20s or my 30s, I might have answered, I don't know, I just want to be happy. And that's the answer I get from most people. Um, especially if you asked me, you know, what do you want the next five years to look like? Or what's your dream vacation? You know, those are questions that are seemingly simple, but really it takes a lot for us to answer these questions. I personally wouldn't be able to answer. I would get paralyzed with all of the options. So if someone asked me like, you know, what does your dream house look like? What's your, what's your fantasy vacation? What do you want? I would, I would just stand there and not be able to really answer And I started to analyze why this was the case. Let's use my example of like, what do you want for a dream vacation? What would a dream vacation look like for you? So honestly, a dream vacation for me looks like a month in Hawaii. Uh, No, no, it's um, more of like a summer in Europe, traveling to all the different countries I want to see. But also I want a dream vacation of two weeks on a lake with nothing to do and access to a boat. And, and that can go on and on. Like I could answer a hundred different ways what my dream vacation looks like. And I realized that our first problem in answering this question is we often don't know what we want because we have first off so many choices. So I realized the, the first problem in answering what do you want is that we are dreaming of so many things. There are so many options out in the world. And if, if given carte blanche, it, it could be anything. There are so many choices. What do you want? Oh, I want so many things. And that's kind of paralyzing. So we don't have an answer to that. And then I realized that even if I could choose one choice, even if I could whittle it down, my brain gets very noisy with all kinds of doubts about making this thing a reality. So so say that like, what do you want for a vacation? And I choose the month in Hawaii with unlimited funds to do all the things I want. And of course, in this scenario, I also look amazing in my bathing suit and I'm gone for a month. But there are thoughts that start to flood my head like, well, who am I to have all that? I could never make all that happen. We could never even afford that. And, And what would I do about my business? And also, what about the bathing suit? Am I selfish and greedy for wanting all of this? And so sometimes the reason we can't answer the simple question, what do I want, is because our limiting thoughts show up and get real freaking noisy keeping us from answering such a simple question, right? And then other times, the thing that keeps us paralyzed from answering this simple question is questions begin a flood of panic. We start to wonder how, the cursed how. So even if the answer to what do I want is a simple, well, I want to clean out the garage this weekend, panic will set in because here's what happened. We start all the how questions. How much time will this take? This looks like a huge job. How will I do it all? How will I organize everything? Do I need to go to Home Depot and spend a ton on an organization system? 
do I have to hire someone? How do I hire someone? How do I know who's the right person? How do I ask for help? Can I do this on my own? How do I do this on my own? I mean, we get completely paralyzed by these goals that we set for ourselves. So my thesis on this topic is that we've stopped asking, what do I want? Because it's simply too difficult to answer. What do I want overwhelms and paralyzes us. And that makes us feel like shit. And based on my very informal research, I know that most women feel like I do. It's actually easier not to explore what do I want and to instead focus on what everyone else wants. The result of this can be people-pleasing, over-delivering to everybody else, and getting to the point where you don't recognize who you are or what you need anymore, and maybe you are there. And if this sounds familiar to you, I'd bet your goals have been on the back burner for a long time. Maybe your goals aren't even on the stove anymore. Do you know what you want? If you don't, that's okay, because today I'm offering a new way to look at this problem. And I'm going to share a story from a long time ago that kind of made me realize how to move past this stuck problem. So here's the story. A hundred years ago, actually 14 this month, here's the story. A hundred years ago, my now husband, John, asked me to marry him and I enthusiastically said yes. The very next minute, the only question anyone had any interest in asking me was, what do you want your wedding to look like? And I got paralyzed because, oh my God, I didn't know. There are so many options when you're getting married. I I was paralyzed by everything. There was so much possibility, but I needed to get married. So I needed to make some decisions. And as the bride-to-be, I must have heard, what do you want every day for two months? And I wanted it to stop just desperately. I was overwhelmed, paralyzed, and clueless about how to address such a seemingly simple question. The goal of getting married, aka having a wedding, felt too big. And stating what I wanted felt selfish. And I was really out of focus. I got super stuck and for months went nowhere after getting engaged. And I also judged myself terribly like, this is my wedding to this dude I love. How can I not know what I want? Then I noticed something weird about myself. I could always tell you what I didn't want. That was an answer that was always on the tip of my tongue. So what didn't I want? So many things. I didn't want a big, huge, expensive wedding. I did not want a long, formal wedding service in a church. I didn't want people in attendance who I didn't really know. You know, sometimes your your parents, friends, or, or, or long-lost cousins are invited to these kinds of things, and I didn't want that. I knew I didn't want a huge sit-down dinner, and I didn't want a fluffy, big, fancy, expensive dress that would have cost a lot of money that I would have only worn for one day. I didn't want it in a catering hall, and I didn't want the DJ to come to announce us, like, coming in for the first time ever as man and wife. You know, I did not. Those those are the things I didn't want. And I'm a little weird because I like things to be a little bit different. So I get that. And the more that I proclaimed what I didn't want, what I did want started to emerge. And so for every time I said what I didn't want, I'm like, well, what does that mean? So what it turns out I did want it was I wanted a small informal wedding in my very small childhood church. And I wanted the reception to be in my dad's lovely small backyard. I wanted to wear a sundress, which I wound up getting on sale at Banana Republic for $48. I'm still very proud of that. I wanted everyone to dance or to go swimming or sit in the hot tub or sit around and talk, whatever they wanted. I didn't want it to be kind of formalized. And I wanted cupcakes and hors d'oeuvres, and that was kind of it. And I wanted it to be fun and not stressful. So that was what I wanted, and that's kind of what my wedding turned out to be. We got married uh, 14 years ago this month. Holy crap. And when I look back on it, it was exactly what I wanted it to be. So let's shift back to today. In my coaching practice, I notice most women feel like me. They are overwhelmed and want to give back to others, and they're not sure what's realistic to want, and they get stuck there. And I realized that my talent of always knowing what I didn't want is actually a tool I could teach my clients, and I call these anti-goals. Knowing what you do not want is very powerful, but you might be like me and judge yourself for knowing only what you do not want. You might think that it's a negative trait. And for a long time, I told myself that I was a negative person for always knowing what I didn't want or didn't like or wouldn't put up with. But I realized 
probably in my 40s that knowing what I did not want isn't negative. It's powerful. So I started to use this tool in every area of my life. What didn't I want? Well, I didn't want a marriage where we yelled at each other. I kind of looked around at the marriages that I grew up with, and I didn't want anything like that. I knew I didn't want a marriage where it was anything like what I had seen before. I didn't want to be the kind of mom who was inconsistent with her kid. I'd looked around at the kids that I was uh, teaching and and the, and the kids of my you know f- family friends, and I was like, oh, I, I don't want to be like that. So I started with what I didn't want. I also realized at some point in my adulthood that I didn't want a job where I had to get up at four thirty in the morning, and I didn't want this. <laughs> I I did not want to ever grade another crappy Romeo and Juliet essay written by an apathetic ninth grader ever again. And those knowings of what I didn't want helped me turn them into things that I did want. And that's how I designed the life that I have today. Every time I thought about what I did not want, it made it more clear what I did want. And not only is that powerful, it's also very clarifying. And everybody I know is looking for clarity. Now, all of this has made me, um, it's, it's allowed me to develop a marriage that fills me up, to parent my kid in a way that feels really good. And I'm watching him turn into a person who's like a really great person. And it's different from anything I experienced as a kid. It allowed me to leave my job as a teacher and then to recreate what it means to be an entrepreneur. Basically, this tool has allowed me to create a life that makes me happy and satisfied and peaceful. And when I ask people what they want, they say, I just want to be happy, or I just want to feel calm, or I just want to feel satisfied. So I examine how this anti-goals tool could help my clients who wanted to grow their businesses. And when I ask my clients, what do you want your business to look like? Their voice takes on a dream equality. They're like, oh... I don't know. I, I want to make money, but I also want to be a full-time mom. And I don't know. I want to go on lots of vacations, but I want to help other women transition through their difficult times. I don't know. It all sounds insane. How can I do all of that? And what I know is you can do anything you want. You can be a mom and make money. You can go on vacation and help other women. You can have everything you want. But until you start talking about it in a clear way with focus and strategy and you really know exactly what it's going to look like, you're going to feel pretty lost, pretty overwhelmed. Those goals, make money, be a mom, go on vacation, travel, help other women, those are lovely goals. And I support you in getting them because I want all that shit too. But they feel overwhelming until we learn how. Goals like this don't let you move forward because you're not sure how. And there are no specifics there. It's too diffuse, too dreamy. Those aren't goals. Those are dreams. And until we move from dreams to goals, we stay stuck. And if you're somebody who's had trouble nailing down your goals, a great place to start might be with this idea of anti-goals. If you're not moving forward, not taking action, feeling like you're in the dream state and you can't make what you want real, start asking these questions. What do you know you don't want? What do you not want this to turn into? What will you not put up with anymore? What do you not want this to be? Those are the questions that'll help you start really filtering out the junk and nailing down what you do want. That's where the magic starts to happen. When I get my clients to do this work, they get specific and you can't believe what they are able to accomplish. Here's some examples. I don't want to have to travel for my job anymore. That's somebody that's a that's a that's a thing that somebody doesn't want to do anymore. Fantastic. Now let's figure out how to make that happen. That's really specific. I don't want to put up with clients I have to chase down for payments. Amen. I'm all for that. Let's put a plan in place to make that goal a reality. Do you see how these anti-goals become actual goals? Another example, I don't want to work on my business outside of school hours. Well, that's fantastic. Let's get rid of all the extra nonsense, work out your timeline, give you some chunks of time to work and figure out how to make that happen. Please remember that knowing what you don't want isn't negative, it's powerful. It creates great clarity and motivation. Are you using anti-goals? Do you even let yourself know what you don't want? 
If you're pushing that away, I promise you're ignoring an incredible tool that can propel you forward in life and business. You can even teach it to your kids, your partner, your colleagues. Now, I've got a free training for you on this topic, and you can go to my free source page at www.genlity.com slash free source. That's F-R-E-E sources. Download the workbook and enjoy the workshop there. Stop telling yourself you're negative because you know what you don't want. It's an awesomely effective tool. And if you need help, you can always reach out to me at jen underscore liddy at me.com. I'd love to hear from you. And thanks for sharing this podcast with that friend of yours. You know, the one who doesn't know what she wants either. She could probably use this training too. Thanks for showing up. Thanks for listening all the way through and go check out that free source. It's pretty awesome. And I'll see you here next week with some new content. Bye. Thanks for joining me today. You can access more free tools and video trainings at www.jenliddy.com slash free sources. That's F-R-E-E sources. If you found this podcast helpful, I'd be so grateful if you subscribed and gave a review. And if you have a friend who'd benefit from today's topic, tool, or strategy, please share the Idea Space podcast with her. That way, together, we can help more women achieve their dreams and take action on their ideas. Isn't it time we all were able to get what we want? Join me next week, and remember, right now, all you need to do to make your idea a reality is take the very next step you know how to. Bye!